Riley Green from the Detroit Tigers is ready to roll. Riley, great to have you on for the first time here, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? Really good. We had your boy uh, Torque on during spring training. It was actually one of our first guests ever on the show before it like went viral. You were his roommate in spring training, right? Uh, correct. Yeah, it was uh, it was me, Torque, and Parker Meadows in the same house. How was that? Uh, it was it was like a it was almost like a frat house. I feel like there was just like <laughs> there's always stuff going on, people coming over, and it was just like it's like man, I just want to go to bed. I got to wake up at, at five o'clock for for a spring game. So yeah, and so good video you? game action going on there. I think right? Isn't Torque yeah. a big gamer? Uh, a little bit. He'll um, he'll hop on a lot. Parker Meadows is a huge gamer though. Huge gamer. Who, who made it a frat house? Like, who would be the most fratty of the three of you? Oh, definitely Torque. Definitely Torque. <laughs> he would, uh, he'd, he'd be inviting over everyone, so. Wait, whoa, 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 wait. You're from Oviedo. So did you guys live in Oviedo and you had, like, all the Oviedo, you know, crew coming over? You have UCF right there? I mean, it's not that far from Oviedo to Lakeland. You guys could have just stayed, you know, in a, you know, Riley might have had a place in Oviedo. How far away? Because we're you it's know an the, hour maybe an international show. People have maybe no an idea. hour. I mean, Oviedo is just where UCF is, which right. is not far from here. You know, you jump on the four hundred eight and the four twenty seven. You know, and I four, and boom, you're right there. I mean, Riley, you know, Riley could have had some of those UCF coeds from back in the day <laughs> over at Haggerty <laughs> coming over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I told him, I told him all to stay in Oviedo. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like there no, you go. Come over. it's work time. So. Okay, that's smart. That's smart. Do you remember when we met a long time ago? Do you remember meeting me? You should. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Let's go. Crap. That's that's a win. Like, hell no. So we actually met one time. You were still at Haggerty, and you were playing, I think, at Trinity Prep. Trinity Prep. And okay. It's just, yeah. And a scout buddy of mine was like, hey, I want you to meet this kid. And my son was playing middle school baseball. So I think he was in sixth grade, and you guys were playing after our game was over, and they introduced. It was a, I mean, obviously you were in high school. You were like, "Who's this?" Riley douche? missed most of your career. He's like, "Who's this douche?" Yeah, he had no <laughs> idea. It was fine. <laughs> Riley was born in two thousand. Yeah, I know. So yeah. I'm just saying we, we have. Yeah, but a high school now. four years ago, like yeah, AJ. I'm, you didn't, I'm kidding. I'm just making AJ feel old. <laughs> you didn't make a blip on his radar, Riley. Right. He was him. good. He was game prep. He had yeah. a big game against Trinidad the Preppers, and he was ready to go. Yeah, that felt that felt like forever ago. So, See, that was four years. I know, and it feels like it's been like twenty. <laughs> been through a lot. He he grinded it through the minor league scratch for all those years. Oh yeah, for 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 the one and a half seasons that he didn't spend at the alt site. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You were at the alt site, dude. At what age were you? Nineteen. Um, nineteen twenty, I think. Wow. I was, I was, I turned 20 at the alt site. Okay. Wait, where Happy was the birthday. Tigers alt site? Uh, Toledo. Triple oh, okay. A. I was going to say, oh. dude, he's living the life. It's in Lakeland. If they had their alt site in Lakeland, yeah, he lives. Was... I know, but I'm like, man, this dude's living the minor league dream. He's living at home. Yeah, right near you know? home. Gosh, he's, my, he's been blessed. Hey, my, my thing on that for a sec is some front offices, GMs, right, will say, oh, well, you know, we had a lost year for our prospect, right, which definitely was the case with some. Could you make the case that it was just as, if not more helpful for you to actually be swinging around with major leaguers at a time when you wouldn't have otherwise? Yeah, so I always I always tell people um, that the alt site was probably the best thing for my career. Um, I learned so many different things there. Just from being the guys that have been in the big leagues, they've been in the big leagues for a while. You know, just picking brains, you know, learning different things, learning how to develop a routine because I feel like I feel like in our profession, like a routine is one of the big things that you need. And going into that, I had no clue of a routine. I would just I just go into the cage. I would hit, just take whatever, 30, 40 swings without any meaning and then just go into the game. And um, I mean, without that, I feel like I feel like I wouldn't be as smart or, you know, as good of a hitter as, a, as, as if I didn't, if I didn't go. Who was that guy for you? Was it a coach? Was it a player? Um, it was a bunch of different guys. Um, 
Jake Rogers now, he was um he was there, you know, he's he's awesome. He's one of my favorite guys. And, you know, he would just he would just kind of tell us a little, just different things about the big leagues and stuff like that. Um Jeff Branson, he was our he was our hitting coordinator, still is. Brano. Um, yeah, Brano. Yeah. He um I mean I mean such a smart guy, such a really good dude. And you know, he was my guy to go to when I needed things and he he kind of still is. So what did they teach you? So just, give me, besides having a better routine, but what was the what were some of the things they taught you that you would tell other people or tell kids still at Haggerty? Just uh just kind of what to expect. You know, you kinda you come into you come into a season in the big leagues. Like last year for me, I came in and I had no clue what to expect. Like I was I was asking so many questions, things like that. And I feel like being in being at the alt site, like those guys would just say things without even knowing what they're saying, like about what's happening here. Like, you know, getting on a plane, whatever. Like I didn't I didn't even know that we flew private. I was like, oh, like are we gonna have to go to the airport and you know check in every single time? Like I I I had no clue. So just just learning all those different things really, really helped me. Hey, um, are you superstitious? Because I know, what was it last year or the year before? You had that two homer game. Was that in the minors? And then you slept with your bat? No, I was, gosh, I was down bad. Um, I was, I was kind of going through it a little bit and I needed to switch something up. And I brought my bat home and, you know, just, you know, laid it next to my bed. And for some reason, I don't know why I did it, but I did it. And then the next day, like I, I came in, got a couple of hits, I think hit a homer. And then like for the rest of the week, I had a really, really good week. That's the only time I've ever slept with my bat. But, you know, I feel like, I feel like we'll do things when we're, we're kind of down bad just to get things rolling. So. Would you do it again? Would you sleep with your bat again? To get I would definitely box? do it again. I would definitely do it again if it came down to it. Um, but I really hope it doesn't come down to it. But it, it probably will. It's baseball. But um, you never know. <laughs> we have a uh, superstitious specialist sitting right next to yeah. you. Yeah. So, listen. Do your other bats get jealous of the one you took home? <laughs> because there's other bats. What happens if you break that bat or the other one's mad at you? And oh. then we – Doug Minkiewicz, you, Riley, before his time. Scott and Eric know who he is, old guy like me. He used to take his bats home if, they, if he wasn't getting hits. He put them in the corner. Of his apartment. Like put him in timeout. Yeah, he put him in the corner and be like, you guys get better if you want to get out of the corner. <laughs> I don't know that he ever slept with the bats, but he would bring them home and put them in the corner. I never did that. So I like that. I like that idea. That's smart. Hey, whatever ta- Listen, Riley, whatever it takes to get hits and hit homers, you do whatever you got to do. We we uh, we had a thing in double A where we would, if we weren't hitting well as a team, we would take all the bats, put them in a big circle in the clubhouse, and then we would um, – put a banana in the middle of all of them. And for some reason, the next day we would come out and score like 10 runs. So for some reason it would always work and we just kept doing it every single day. That's some voodoo shit. Yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> Joe Boo stuff right there. Did you eat the banana? <laughs> uh, no, no, it was uh, it was usually like an old banana. I don't know, the old bananas worked better than the newer ones for some reason, I don't know. That's some major league stuff. Dude, they tried this a lot. If he knows old bananas work better than new bananas. (laughs) This wasn't like a one-time thing they were doing. And in Erie, everybody rakes in Erie. Like, I think you just got to hit in Erie. Very true. That that park's one of my favorite parks to hit in, that's for sure. Not in April. No. No, not in April. How many balls did you hit into that gym in left field in Erie? (laughs) Um, I hit a few, but there were a few where I kind of, I kind of just poked it, and you know, since it's so, it's so short there that it just, it would just sneak over every time. How about oh, that ballpark that is your home ballpark right now in April or in cold months, especially for left-handed hitters? Do you think they should try and maybe move fences in for the lefties? I mean, I mean, we did a little bit. We moved it in like seven or ten feet or something like that. Um, but I mean, I love, I love our ballpark. Um, you know, if you, if you stay out of the right center gap, you're good in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I feel like, I feel like it flies pretty well to right field and left field, just like the right center and center doesn't really fly that much. All right. So in your first at bat yesterday, you were 299. 
You got that knock. They didn't call you out at second base. He tagged you on the foot. They didn't replay it. I think you were out, but that's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> did, you look, did you look up at the scoreboard and go, yeah, read something? <laughs> No, I mean, I try, I try not to look at all the all the stats and stuff during the game because another superstition of mine is whenever I look up at the board and if I, for some reason, look at my average, look at my OPS or something, my next at bat, I always get out. Always. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something super weird, but I, I, I never look at the board besides like the outs and the, and the score of the game. Riley, two, two things about this. One thing about the scoreboard in Detroit. They used to always put the most obscure stats for the visiting team. Do they still do that? Because it used to say, Przinsky is 0 for 57 on Tuesdays when the grass is wet. Just so you would look up there and you would see it, and you're like, damn, I suck on those days when the grass is wet. They'd always be like the most obscure stat. And then you don't know how good you have it at Comerica Park, okay? Because mm -hmm. I played in it. When you, when you go to take BP today, I want you to look at the field. Now, where the bullpen fence is, that was not there. So the, the, the flagpole is in center field. You had to hit it over the back of the bullpens, okay? And in right field, they moved that in, and where the new section of seats is, those were where the bullpens were. So you don't have, have any – we used to love going there because we could pitch and we could have – we had Torrey Hunter in center field. We're like, go ahead, hit as far as you want. And Torrey just <laughs> – catch everything. So just just think about – remember how good you have it at Comerica Park. Yeah, I'll, I'll – I'm definitely glad the fences are in because, gosh, that'd be that'd be a problem trying to hit it out there. That's for sure. Uh, the one person it didn't affect even during that time period, or I mean, there were some, but Miggy Cabrera has had an incredible career. We're almost at the end. I feel like you know it hasn't been talked about a lot this year. You know, last year it felt like there was a lot of attention for Miggy too, and he had the honorary um, spot at the All Star game. So. You get to live it and be around him knowing that the time is limited, right? He's going to retire after this season. What's it been like? And do you try and almost like force yourself not the, to, to be less shy and spend some extra time with him and be around him just knowing that there's not going to be a next year? Yeah, I mean, Miggy's awesome. Um, you know, when I, when I first got up here, you know, he kind of welcomed me in with open arms. You know, always talking to me, always, always just saying things about the game. Just, you know, like, hey, like this guy's got a good whatever curveball, see it up kind of things like that. But uh, what impresses me the most is just watching his BP routine. You know, he we actually picked up his um, his BP path the other day and um, there are no marks below the barrel. Or above the barrel, so the little, so the little barrel spot. It's literally thousands of balls were hit there, and there are no marks below it or above it, which I thought was insane. So it just, it just shows like his attention to detail. You know, making sure he hits the barrel every time, and that made me think like, he, like that's why he's, you know, such a good hitter because his attention to detail in the cage, his routine, is always the same. It's always spot on. He rarely ever rolls over a ball in BP. Like, I don't think I've ever seen it. So I think it's, I think it's a saying that that's the case with that. But yeah, Miggy's, Miggy's awesome. All the things he does, I think the, the way he goes about his, his day and the game and things like that is awesome to watch. What's the funniest thing he's done since you've been up there? Oh, <laughs> there was a, not talking about myself. I'm not trying to talk about myself, but there was a Riley Green, bucket hat day and it was a <laughs> green hat that said like green 31 on it and um miggy was wearing it in the clubhouse and uh they had a camera on him and um he was wearing it and he was like yeah like i want to go on the lake after after we win today that was a whole thing I, it's it's like it's all over social media and things like that but i thought i thought it was hilarious I haven't seen that. I got to check that. Yeah, out. I got to look for that. But, yeah. I mean, this bucket hat thing. I mean, was he like, "Damn, they didn't make a bucket hat for me." <laughs> I won the triple crown one that's year. True, but they weren't as in style when. No, that's also true. He man. was in his prime. True, you're right. They're kind of coming back right now. Yes, I mean Riley, you, you, I mean, you're way younger than all of us at this point. So, bucket hats, yay or nay? Oh, 
Nah, I'm kind of off them. I don't, I don't, I don't really wear them that much. <laughs> well, dude, now, I mean, obviously your early career, but like later in career, he could say, Hey, marketing team, instead of bucket hats, let's do blank. So what would that be? Like, what should be the marketing promo for you in the future that you think would be cool where you're like, I'd actually keep that and wear that or use that regularly. I don't know, maybe a shirt or something. I don't really okay. know. I, yeah, sure. I don't. Sleeveless? Shades? Tank top? Uh, definitely sleeveless. Have to go sleeveless. Wear it in the gym before we have, before we go out to the field. <laughs> Sun's out, gun's out. Hey, we had Torkelson on before, and he said, well, we asked him, who's a better athlete, you or him? What do you think his answer was? I, I mean, I mean, I'm going to say me. But who's, uh, who... Who can win in golf? Oh, him, hundred percent. I'm terrible at golf. I show up. I show up for the good vibes and just to hang out. I don't really. I'm not. I'm not the best golfer. That's for sure. Hey, what did you think of Torque um, roasting Jordan Lyles? Like, what what's that whole situation? Can you give us any insight there? We've got two um, catchers on here. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have much on it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, it is what it is. I, I didn't really know about it until, until like the next day. But yeah, I don't, I don't really got much on it to be honest. That, that, that's a veteran answer yeah, right there. Go. That's a veteran answer. You know the whole story. I get it. It's cool. No, I, no, no, totally. I mean, you're his roommate in spring training. Trust me. He came. He was like, "Hey, did you see what I said?" It's okay. <laughs> it's a good answer, Riley. You've learned. They've taught you well in Detroit. Who's the Who's the coolest guy you've met? Since you've been up, is there anybody you were when you first met him? You were like, "Holy shit, that's blank." Not Mickey? AJ. Not me. Or clearly not me. I Otani. Mean, yeah. Have you spoken to Otani? Uh, I've never spoken to Otani. I want to, but I never have. Um, gosh, who? I don't know. Um, I mean, Detroit runs through some. They bring some pretty cool names out there to the field a lot. But it's different too. I mean, you got to do it on the base pass, or I guess. No, what I'm saying is, like, even pregame though. Yeah. When we used to go into Comerica, they used to have all kinds of cool dudes coming out to throw out the first pitch. Oh yeah. Really? A lot. Detroit's sneaky like that. There's a. There's really no one on my mind. We have, we had a Michigan football player. I forgot his name. Who came out? I thought that was pretty cool. Um, You're not allowed to say that. You're committed to Florida. You're not allowed to say that about Michigan. But uh, the guy that I want to come out is actually the country singer Riley Green. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's why I want to come out and meet and you know see him throw a first pitch. Uh, but there you I go. Figured- There's your thing. They could give out guitars, Riley Green guitars, and you both could like put your signature on them, and you could learn to play, and you guys could do a song together. Yeah, I, mean, your- I got I got to shoot him like a DM or something. And be like, hey, can I feature on one of your songs? You know, maybe yeah. possibly feature. I like it. I don't know that. I'm not a country guy. I don't know this guy, but um, is he a big deal? Yeah, he's you know an up and comer. You know? Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah, he's good. He's good. He's got a, he's got seven figure Instagram following. So yeah, does the other Riley Green have seven figure Instagram? Not yet. I mean, it's country music versus uh, early stage early stage <laughs> baseball career. Okay. okay, Riley, who's the best athlete to come out of Haggerty High School? Is it you? Eflin, Mount Castle, Vaughn Grissom, or Jeff Driscoll. They all went there? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Jeff. Um, you know, quarterback in the NFL. Um, I mean, I mean, it's tough to beat that. You're running away from guys that are super fast, you know, throwing throwing dots to people. You know, I I would definitely say Jeff. Jeff's a great dude, too. You know, I watched, I watched him when I was – when I was younger, going to um, going to high school games and stuff like that, and you know he was incredible in high school, and he was really really good now too. All right, this is the last one for me. We have a fourteen, almost fourteen year old kid from PG. I'm sure you did the whole travel ball circuit and everything. Mm-hmm. Did you play yep. PG? Oh, you were oh, yeah. fifth round. You were fifth overall. First, what should we ask this kid who is thirteen years old? He can throw 90 miles an hour. He hits the ball 90 miles an hour. What should we – he's 6'2", 180 pounds. What do we need to ask or tell this kid 
from Riley Green, an ex PG superstar. And his dad played in the NFL. What? To ask him like a question? Or tell him, whatever. What do you want well, to hear from this dude? Well, the question I would want to know is what are your parents feeding you? <laughs> uh, and then, God, I'd be like, hey, man, be careful. Throwing 90 as a 13. I don't even throw 90. I don't even think. And I'm, and I'm 22. <laughs> be careful throwing 90 as a 13-year-old, man. It could be free and easy, though, maybe for him. I mean, he's a That's man. A, he's a man if he's, he's that big. 6'3", 180 so We pounds. have him coming up soon. So we'll let you know how it goes. So here's here's the deal, um, Riley, as, as we say goodbye here. Um, I, I am a little connected in music. In the off season, because, I mean, we're almost near the end of the season at this point. Can we bring you back and we'll bring on Riley, the other Riley? Yeah. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, consider it done homework assignment for me and we'll hit you back like in like November or something right after the season and, and we'll bring them in. Perfect. Perfect. I'll we'll be get, there. We'll Don't get that. It. We'll get this Riley green. I mean, I'm sure he's in Orlando in the off season. He can drive right over. I mean, he's going to have to cross downtown. Going to have to slum it over here. I live over by Bay <laughs> Hill. So you're going to have to slum it Riley. No, it's not the high That's price. Go veto. Yeah. Right. And come over. You can sit next to me here and we can have Riley green on the screen and you can ask him whatever you want. Yes, uh, exactly. So I'm in. That's like a that's like a that's like a 40 minute drive for me. So I'm in. Done. Okay, we've got it. Uh, we'll hit you back in a couple months, dude. Enjoy the rest of the season. Um, stay strong and uh, keep doing your thing out there. Having a great year, man. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate you. Thanks, Riley. Riley Green with us.